Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMblog's coverage of the KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2022 event taking place in Detroit. We're happy to be joined today by Saad Malik, the CTO of SpectroCloud. Welcome. Thank you for hosting me. Can you start just by giving the audience a quick overview of the company? Sure. Um, so again, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Saad Malik. I'm the CTO and co-founder for SpectroCloud. So we're a VC-backed startup founded in 2019, focusing on making Kubernetes accessible to all enterprises. Um, and as you know, David, Kubernetes is a very complex platform with many different moving parts. So what we do is provide that easy button for organizations to run Kubernetes at scale. And our product palette takes a unique approach to being able to manage Kubernetes full stack. And essentially what we do is break Kubernetes into all the different parts, everything from the operating system to the Kubernetes distributions and any integrations that a customer may want into a model that we call a cluster profile. And then once you have this model, you can very easily deploy your Kubernetes clusters into any environment from your public clouds, private clouds, data centers, edge, and then consistently manage them at scale all from a single peanut class. And what would you say, how would you say your company fits into the ecosystem of Kubernetes that's being discussed at KubeCon? Yeah, great question, Brian. So the cloud native ecosystem is massive and growing every day. Just looking today at the CNCF landscape, there are over 1800 different technology integrations and members. Everything from the core layers, from your operating systems to different CSIs and CNIs, to all the various add-on integrations, like your logging, your monitoring, security, ingress, you name it. There are so many different layers across the board. Because in Palette, we focus on full stack management. We help the ecosystem to manage all their integrations into these cluster profiles. And once you have defined these different integrations across the board, you can very quickly deploy them into one clusters or many clusters. And from there also provide all the day two capabilities like configuration changes or upgrade patching. Um, even though we're a Kubernetes enterprise management platform, what's unique about us is the fact that we do full stack management, not just focusing on the Kubernetes. And for attendees of the event, thinking about the problems that you solve, can you talk about your technology offerings and what you're showing at the show? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our platform itself is called Palette. It's primarily offered as a SaaS offering, but we do offer dedicated install and private install options for customers who need it. We have a few different additions that cater to different use cases. Our Palette Enterprise caters to more IT operation teams, whether it's your SREs, your platform engineering, or DevOps, and these are the people that are, are in charge of the Kubernetes clusters, feeling the pain of managing them at scale. So these teams are getting a constant barrage of requirements from the dev team. They're asking to get access to the Kubernetes clusters, adding more integrations and operators, performing backups, RBAC. There's just so many different things that they're always being asked to do. So this is where Palo Enterprise really shines. It helps to automate many of these different capabilities and essentially provide them as services so that you don't have to manually do these operations or have very complex and scripts uh, to perform these operations. And that's great. Uh, what about the your newer offering, uh, Pallet Edge technology? Can you talk a little bit about what that is? And, and then the other offer that we're also providing is our Pallet Edge offering. Um, and then essentially in this, we're is helping organizations to really enable edge Kubernetes at scale. Um, as you guys both know, Kubernetes at the edge has its own requirements, you know, from limited to no IT skills personnel. There is no connectivity or intermittent connectivity, and you still need to support a multitude of different integrations and technologies. You know, everything from your GPU systems to hardware accelerator TPUs, how do you manage all of these things at scale? And that's what our new offering, Palette Edge, is able to provide. It's a software-only solution, which can help organizations to easily manage tens of thousands of locations with ease. Well, it's great to hear about your products. Um, what makes them unique or differentiated in the market? So, good question. There are many conventional management platforms which help with Kubernetes lifecycle management. 
but they don't cover the full stack management and integrations the way we do. All the capabilities I've mentioned from doing backups to conformance scans to RBAC management, these are capabilities we provide out of the box with the support of all the integrations. Also, many of the existing platforms are highly opinionated. They have certain specific distributions to support specific integrations. And what's the value of our platform is not only can you bring in any integration, you can even bring in any Kubernetes distribution that you want to bring in. Uh, the other key differentiator for us is how our platform scales to manage tens of thousands of clusters. Everything from our policies to the profiles are essentially pushed down into the clusters. And so the clusters are self-enforcing and self-managing. Now, in the rare cases where the management platform goes down or there's intermittent connectivity issues, the clusters can still self-govern and allow us to, our system to manage tens of thousands of environments. Now, a lot of vendors use platforms like the uh, KubeCon event to make new product announcements. Do you guys have any kind of new announcements that you're going to be making at the show? And if so, can you give us any of the details? Yeah, so related to the Pallet Edge, we're going to be announcing a few new different capabilities. Um, the first one is how do we keep the onboarding process at the edge super simple? Uh, if you guys think about it like a McDonald's store manager, they wouldn't have the necessarily Kubernetes experience or the Linux experience to be able to operate these edge cluster. So how do we do zero touch provisioning? What we're coming out with is a QR based workflow where a end user can essentially scan on top of a device a QR code and register that device directly to an edge location. Um, this will of course make it super simple without having to learn anything about Kubernetes uh, for any user. Uh, the other key capability that we're also gonna be announcing is a pallet extended Kubernetes edge distribution. Kubernetes at the edge has different requirements in terms of CPU and memory. And so what we're gonna be doing is having a new offering that is a highly edge optimized distribution that can work with smaller form factor, work with ARM devices. And I think this is gonna be a new enabler for organizations to run whether small clusters or large clusters, even at the edge. Um, and finally, when you think about edge projects, there are tens of thousands of environments that organizations need to manage. How do you get visibility and management into all these different locations? We're providing a very simple map-like UI that allows organizations to filter based on problematic clusters and health of them so they can quickly find issues uh, wherever they may be. Now at uh, KubeCon Cloud Native, we're gonna hear a lot on the keynote stage about kind of the big picture and where things are going. Uh, are there any trends that your company is looking into going into 2023? Uh, a few big areas that we're very interested in. Um, we're seeing this big uptick of edge competing project. Every industry from your retail, your healthcare, manufacturers, and others are looking at exploring how to provide edge computing systems at the locations. It's amazing to see how Kubernetes and related technologies can be the enabler for running these workloads at those edge locations. And I think obviously that's an area that we're very, very interested in. Uh, the other big interesting area is around developer tooling. Kubernetes has become that critical business infrastructure that is used to power applications. But for developers, there's a lot of complexity when it comes to understanding how Kubernetes works, getting access to the different integrations. I mean, it comes to very steep learning curves, everything from your CI CD to your Docker files to services and stateful services. It's a little bit too much for developers. So we're looking forward to the next generation of tooling and platforms that can make developers a lot more faster at being able to leverage all the capabilities, but at the same time, accelerate their velocity for providing innovation. Now, this has been a lot of great information, but is there any chance you can give us a quick demo of the product so folks watching uh, at home can see what, what the uh, solution looks like? Uh, happy to, absolutely. Cool, uh, let me log into our pallet platform. Uh, again, like I mentioned, we offer this as a SaaS platform, but we also have dedicated install options. Uh, when I log into the platform, uh, we do authenticate with single sign-on, you know, whether you, you use Okta, Azure AD, it doesn't really matter. As you log into the platform, you get logged into a concept called project. Projects is how we provide isolation for different sets of resources, you know, whether it's your clusters or cluster profiles, and you can get a very quick glance in terms of all the resources running inside of each project. Um, everything from your 
cost for regarding different clouds or different resources, everything is visible from the single dashboard. The heart of Spectre Cloud really is this concept of a cluster profile. And you can think of it like a blueprint or template that describes the entire infrastructure. Everything from your operating system to the Kubernetes, your networking, your storage will be called the core layers and everything that sits on top of it from the load balancer, service mesh, logging, monitoring, and more are the add-ons. Out of the box, we support 50 different integrations across the CNCF ecosystem from load balancers, ingress, logging, monitoring, and more, but we make it very easy for end users and customers to bring in their own integrations. If there's something you don't see on the list, you can very easily add a pack integration either as a Helm chart or natively as a integration into our platform. Now, the way of provisioning clusters is relatively simple. If you're using a public cloud, you go into the project settings and you can add in your cloud account credentials. You can specify, here's my actual Amazon credentials, access key, secret key, or SDS. And as you can imagine for other cloud environments like VMware, Google, Azure, Mass, very similar. If you go through the cluster workflow and select and take a look at this screen here, these are all the clusters that are available in this specific project. In this environment, I have clusters running on Amazon, on Azure, on Google, VMware, every environment that our platform supports. And you get the same level of visibility and help that you do for provision cluster as you do for imported clusters as well. To provision a new cluster, you can click on add new cluster, click on deploy new cluster, specify the cloud environment to provision. Here we can select something like Amazon, click on start AWS configuration, demo cluster two, select the cloud account. And then from the next screen, I'm specifying, I wanna use a managed Kubernetes offering EKS, and I can pick, I wanna use this cluster profile prod EKS. From here, I wanna, if I need to make any modifications to any of my configurations for my Kubernetes, I can make it. I can also add additional add-on profiles that relate specifically to maybe my security or my monitoring stack, uh, or I can leave it as is. Now we support two different modes of provisioning. We can do static provisioning where we will place the cluster into your existing infrastructure, like your VPCs and subnets, or we can dynamically provision a brand new cluster um, and, and we will provision the infrastructure too. And then from the actual pool configuration, I can specify the number of worker pools. I can say, I wanna have my auto scaling groups, specify a minimum two number of nodes, uh, maybe maximum is four, and by default, desired is two. We support both on-demand and spot instances. From here, I can maybe select T3 extra large. And then by the way, we on a hourly basis, we are also getting the latest cloud cost for instance types. So we can also show very, very detailed granular uh, show back and charge back capabilities in our platform too. Uh, more than provision the cluster, we do things like operating system patching, we can run scans, RBAC management, nested clusters, a lot of really cool capabilities. I'm gonna go and validate the cluster and then click on finish configuration. And then within 15 minutes or so, you'll have a brand new production grade cluster with all the integrations that you specified. Uh, obviously this is just a core capability of provisioning a new cluster. Um, just as a preview, because we talked about it, I am also gonna show the Noxdal UI. So if I go into my edge stores project, notice that I have a number of different clusters running across different environments, right? These clusters are running in California and Pittsburgh and Washington. I can click on a map style UI to get visibility across all the different clusters that are running and even drill down into any specific cluster to see exactly the health and metrics of that cluster. Uh, there are many other capabilities from here from being able to onboard and do AB style partition updates to any of these systems, which I'm sure we can cover in a later demo. Well, thanks for that great demo. Where can people go if they want to find out more information about Spectral Cloud and some of the offerings that you talked about today? Uh, the best place to learn more about Spectral Cloud is spectralcloud.com. That's S-P-E-C-T-R-O cloud.com. Everything about the different editions and offerings are listed on our website. Okay, well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog and be part of our KubeCon coverage. My pleasure. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you.